So as you can see, the title of today's video is Latent Heat. It has the subtitle Specific Heat because we are going to be using both latent and specific heat. When we take a solid, raises temperature up to its melting point and then raises temperature some more so that we can bring that liquid up to a certain temperature. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. In this video, of course, you can subscribe, you can give me a thumbs up, you can share, and please leave me a comment. What did you think of the video? So this is where latent heat, and this is the problem we have. How much energy is needed to take 2.5 kilograms of ice, that's solid water, H2O, at minus 15 degrees Celsius, and we want to turn it into, melt it, and turn it into water, liquid water, at 35 degrees Celsius. Now, I like to just make a little diagram like this. Not 100% necessary, but it gives me a little plan here. I am going to be going from minus 15 to 35. I'm going to have to go through, because this is water, the melting point at zero degrees Celsius. And that means I'm going to have to add up three values. The first one is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature from minus 15 to zero. That's when it's going to be a solid. And then number two, we're going to melt that substance when there's no temperature change. And number three is we're going to take the liquid and raise it up from zero to 35 degrees Celsius. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need the specific heats and the latent heats. Maybe not all of them, but remember, there's kind of five values for each substance. One, of course, for water, most people know is 4,186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. That is the specific heat of liquid water. Now, there's also a specific heat for ice, which is solid water, and steam, which is gas water in the gas phase. For ice, it's 2,100 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, and for steam, it's 2,010 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Now, because this problem we're going to be talking about melting, we have to talk about latent heat. Now, there's two latent heats. There's latent heat of fusion. This is one we use for melting. And this is latent heat of vaporization. This is what we're going to use if we wanted to vaporize that liquid. Now, we're only going to be using three. First one we're going to be using is raising the temperature of the ice. So we'll need the first specific heat. And then we're going to melt it. So we're going to need the latent heat of fusion, the energy needed to melt. And then we're going to be raising the temperature of that liquid. So we're going to use this one also, and we're not going to use the other two. All right. So let's go on. We're going to do three equations separately, three different uh, sections here, and then add them all up. So for ice, we're going to use our MC delta T. And we know the mass is 2.5 kilograms. C, the specific heat of ice, the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram, one degree Celsius, is 2,100 joules, and we have a temperature change of 15 degrees, so we have 15 degrees right here, and that means the energy needed to take that ice from minus 15 to zero is 78,750 joules, just like that. Okay, step two, we're gonna have to melt that water, and to melt it, we're going to use the same, but not the same, but a similar equation. Remember, when you're melting it, the energy is going into the melting, the separating, the breaking, the weakening of those bonds, and there's no temperature change. So you'll notice this equation has no temperature. This is like the specific heat, but it's called latent heat right here. And we have the mass, and there's no temperature change. So we simply have 2.5 kilograms times 333 times 10 to the third uh, joules. Now you'll notice here it says 330 kilojoules per kilogram. So I changed that by, I took was able to take the kilo off of here by putting this 10 to the third because I have uh, kilograms and kilograms that I want to cancel. I want my answer to just be in regular old joules. Once again, there's no temperature change, so there's no temperature value on the end of this equation like we had on the previous slide. So that is actually 832,500 joules to melt 2.5 kilograms of ice and turn it into a liquid. So that's our second value that we're going to be adding up. The third value is when we take that liquid from zero and raise it up to 35 degrees Celsius. Now, this is what the same equation we had for the solid. This is MC delta T. Now we have the mass. It's the same mass. 
but now we have to use the specific heat of the water and not the specific heat of the ice. The specific heat of water is 4,186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And this time we have a change in temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. We're just going to multiply those three values. And we get that that is 366,275 joules. So you can see we have three values. Raise the ice temperature up to zero from minus 15 to zero, melting, and then going from zero up to 35 degrees Celsius. And these are the three values we calculated in the previous slide. And all we have to do is add all three of those up. And I'm not going to put the numbers down here again, but you get 1,198,854 joules. Okay, it might seem like a lot. It is kind of a lot of water, 2.5 kilograms, 2.5 liters. We wanted to do three things, melting, uh, raising the temperature of solid, melting, and then raising the temperature of liquid. This we're going to also write, I think, would be better if we put 1,199 kilojoules. All right, so there you go. That is a typical problem that you would see from your textbook. If you wanted to also bring it up to 100 and then turn it into a vapor and then raise the temperature of the vapor above 100 to some other value, you just add up all five, do five different calculations, okay? So there you go. I hope you found that really helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. You should subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video. You should leave me a comment for this video. And you should not forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.